Yes, uh, I think uh, I just wished our athletes uh, the best, and they just boarded the plane. I was at the airport with them, and they're all very eager uh, to come to Japan. And I wish them, and also, of course, uh, my gratitude to Japan uh, for hosting the Olympic uh, with them. Yo, so we're um, we are now adjusting the camera, whole camera, yes, yes. audio. So sure. wait for a moment. Okay. I will also do the same here. Is that your office? Yes, this is my office in the cabinet. Oh, really? Cool. Uh -huh. So you work there? Yes, uh, I we we did not have a lockdown, so I still oh. go to uh, the cabinet for meetings. Uh -huh. So how's the weather in Taiwan now? Uh, it's mm -hmm. really hot. Yeah, it's a little bit hot uh, and also humid. And a typhoon is probably coming later this week. Ah, uh, typhoon, mm. yeah. So, uh, I've been to Taiwan once. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy uh, working along the uh -huh. coast. Which city did you uh, visit? Um, like Taipei. Ah, uh, Taipei. Uh. Taipei. I stayed for a night. It's it was quite short. Ah, okay. Yeah, I want to visit again. Mm -hmm. Here. Of course, uh, we, we all <laughs> uh, welcome more travelers, I guess. And now with both sides uh, more fully vaccinated, maybe um, later this year, uh, more people will travel. When will it be possible, you think? Uh, I think it depends on the vaccination schedule, of course. We're now very uh, stable, like uh, every day it's 1% of population, 1% of population. Uh, and so it's pretty good speed. How much percent was um, finished? We, we are at, uh, I think, about 22 doses per 100 person. Uh, and so uh, we aim to, of course, surpass 25, maybe reaching 30 uh, by the end of the month, maybe 20 something, uh, we'll see. Uh, and then um, as we can see, if it's 1% every day, uh, then the remaining 80% uh, will take 80 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in mathematical like Yes, but that assumes, of course, uh, like supply is constant, uh, which for Taiwan's case is far from the case. So again, we thank the Japanese uh, for the very generous donation, without which I wouldn't be able to have two doses either. Um, yeah, the, in Japan, the number of vaccines is decreasing nowadays. So um, also we need to um, accelerate the vaccination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we all face together. So uh, yeah. we, we're really happy to share experience and also learn from you. Yes, yeah. Uh, could you wait two minutes? Of course, of course. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. ちょっと日本と同じぐらいで、あの、ワクチンの接種とか、で、あの、ワクチンにも、こう、こういう人たちが来て、同じ状況に面してるので、意見を共有できる方がとても嬉しいと思います。そういう声に、あ、お願いします
as you are, but um, yeah, please. If it's low, mm -hmm. low. Okay. Yeah, I can I can wait a little bit between sentences. Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. noticed that sometimes the uh, overdubbing interpreter will struggle to keep up, and yeah. and people will lose like when is the sentence, uh, like when is the next sentence. It's gonna be really helpful. Thank you for understanding our like. Uh, our work. Yeah, yes, I, I, I'm also an interpreter and translator, <laughs> so I respect my uh, fellow uh, interpreter and translators. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived in America? Uh, just visit. I did not uh, stay for a long time. When I was in Silicon Valley, for example, it was just a few months. And then just a few months in Boston, a few months in Portland, and so on. But I didn't stay for long. I stayed in Germany, but not in America. Oh, I see. Um, how did you get your English ability? Uh huh. On on the internet, just no, chatting to random people. Yeah, I that that was actually my first uh, visit as an adult to to Japan was to compete in the uh, the uh, so-called pro tour of Magic the Gathering. Uh, it's a card game. So I was competing professionally, and I won Asia-Pacific top, top 8 championship in Tokyo. Uh, so my English vocabulary is all from those cards, those Magic uh, the Gathering card. That was my English vocabulary, and that's my how my conversation was built upon. So, can we chat? Yes, anytime. Ah, okay, thank you. So, again, thank you for sharing your precious time with us. And it's a great honor to see you. So, let's begin. Um, could you briefly introduce yourself for the audience, please? Hello, I'm Audrey Tang. I'm Taiwan's digital minister in charge of social innovation, open government, and youth engagement. Thank you very much. I'm Audrey Tang. I'm Taiwan's digital minister in charge of social innovation, and um, you cancelled uh, attending um, the opening ceremony of Tokyo Olympics. How do you feel now? You're on feeling to yourself. You're on feeling. Um, I'm feeling a lot of gratitude to the support that people on Twitter, a lot of them Japanese people, even Japanese people writing in English or Mandarin for me to uh, more easily understand uh, for their understanding and support. It is quite clear uh, that we care deeply uh, to each other. And I've seen people on Twitter saying, yeah, if Audrey comes to Japan, there will be a lot of people moving unnecessarily, <laughs> and so on, which will make counter-pandemic harder, I guess, more difficult. Uh, and so because uh, my cancellation is due to the uh, pr new protocol from the Olympic Committee about counter-pandemic measures of the opening ceremony, so I think having some contribution to counter-pandemic is the utmost importance. But to be honest, you wanted to attend the Olympic opening ceremony? Uh, initially, the invitation was for me to mm -hmm. attend the opening ceremony along with other people from Taiwan. Uh, and then we were told that the attendee number for the opening ceremony need to be drastically reduced because of counter-pandemic reasons. Uh, and so I thought, yeah, if that's the case, I should talk with our premier and the president about this. Okay. Um, I know, 
、日本国民の中には不安に思っている方もいるでしょうし、まだまだ生活苦しい方もたくさんいらっしゃいます。そういう中で、今回のオリンピックはどういう意義があると、ポールズさんは感じていますか There are many people who are suffering from the virus, and most of the games will be held without audience. So, under the circumstances,、uh, what do you think is the goal of this Olympics? Well, in my opinion,、uh, what's important is that people take the time to understand the science behind pandemic prevention. <clears throat> Because, as we can see around the world, if people internalize the science, they can come up with very good social innovations to help the pandemic effort. But if the government does not explain the science, but rather just impose some measures, then、uh, people very quickly enter into a state、uh, of fatigue. Uh, and then the counter pandemic b e c o m e more difficult. So, whether it's Olympic or any other event, the most important thing is whether people around the world learn more things about pandemic prevention because of this event. If that is the case, then it has a positive value. I think it's very important to learn. Yes, any opportunity to learn something about, say, the new variants, how the variants differ. From the original copy of the virus. That is an important thing to learn. In Taiwan, for example, last year we were told by the experts that the original、um, copy of the virus requires three quarters of people in any place to wear a mask, wash their hands, and keep the distance. However, the new variant, the Alpha variant, for example, three quarters is not enough, which is why Taiwan had. A brief、uh, a couple months of community spread now. However,、uh, we successfully control it to double digits per day for a while now because we now understand it requires more than 90% of people in any place wearing masks, washing hands, and keeping distance. So, updating these numbers, this knowledge is very important. <laughs> と科学に基づいた情報を人々が学ぶ必要があるとでそうなることによってあのパンデミックに集めたということができるとりあえずその情報を一つ一つ知っていくことによって変化でも出てきているけれどもこれから戦っていくということにつながるあの復興五輪と今回の東京オリンピックは言われていますがあの日本国内でもその意味合いが薄れてきていますオードリーさんはどんな情報発信を出てきたと考えていますか Well, I think the idea of reconstruction is not、uh, forgotten. In both Taiwan and Japan, we talk about resilience.、Uh, the US talks about building back better.、Uh, whether people talk about pandemic in the present tense, Or in the future tense or in the past tense,、uh, recovery and、uh, thriving after the pandemic is still a reconstruction mindset. So I would say the reconstruction after earthquakes、uh, or other natural disasters is one of the most important lessons one can learn about resilience, and that can inform the building back better, the resilience after a pandemic as well. In Taiwan, we use our counter disaster、uh, methods like the SMS based earthquake notification, flood evacuation warning, and so on, and repurpose that for contact tracing, quarantine, and so on. So, 
our system for counter pandemic is built upon on our system of reconstruction and prevention of more disasters after a natural disaster. And I believe the same applies to Japan and other countries as well. So I think the idea of reconstruction is still very much there. We just need to broaden the scope and also learn from the people who suffered from other disasters before the pandemic. Thank you for your comment. Uh, but still, we were expecting to invite people from abroad to Fukushima to show our reconstruction, for example, eating food or visiting, um, visiting countryside, nature, enjoy nature, uh, etc. But we can't have that opportunity under the circumstances. How can we? spread our reconstruction? How can we send information from Fukushima to the world? Well, there are, uh, other than human-to-human -human, uh, movement, there are, of course, digital ways, such as this very conversation. There are also fruits uh, and other agricultural products that are not limited by the quarantine and pandemic control measures. Uh, and there are also uh, the just revamping people's ideas about Fukushima, right? So um, imagery, films, video about uh, the local reconstruction purposes can also be transported, again, not limited to uh, pandemic control. And I think because the vast majority of uh, people watching the Olympic will do so online, including me, right? So because of that, uh, any imagery that you play as part of the Olympic program, reach far more people than you would even for a traditional in-person Olympic. So I think this is a really good chance to get the imagery, to get the ideas across to the entire world. And if they want to enjoy some agricultural product or fruits or stories and so on, so much the better. Thank you very much. こういうことは私たちもやっぱりあの、え、ま、福島、いや、あなたの災害からのこの関節化、そういうこともあるし、今、その、ウイルスからのこう、災害のことも、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう
it's necessary to express one by one. If everyone should be involved in that movement. Y yes, social innovation means everyone's business with everyone's help. So it is not just about one or two people in the government working for people, but rather about working with people. Well, because I had the opportunity of engaging on the anniversary with the young people in Fukushima, I learned directly from the young people that they are a generation of resilience and hope. It seems that they are all very eager to tell the world that the reconstruction is quite successful. And I, uh, after listening to them, said this is like um, in computer's browser. Sometimes there is a cache, meaning an old version of a website uh, that is cached on the computer. But maybe because of lack of connection and so on, people did not take the time to update their impression about Fukushima. It's like always uh, reading an old copy on the local computer's browser. But what we need, as I've just mentioned uh, during the Olympic and so on, is use this as an opportunity to clear the browser cache, to clear away the stereotypes, to clear away uh, what people's uh, association to Fukushima. Maybe they watch the TV on international news channel just a few months after the uh, earthquake. And then people can now learn that Fukushima is again ready for people to travel to, for people to come, for people to enjoy, and also for the young people to build a live and thriving community. ま、コンピューターでキャッチをクリアする機能というのもこれまで古いバージョンで飛ばしていた情報を今あの新しく情報のアップデートする機能で、えっと、オジックのメンズなど、オンラインでの発信などを通して、今のキャッチをクリアする
uh, the tastiness uh, to to other people. But on the other hand, if travel uh, is very difficult as it is now, then of course it is more difficult for people to understand the current situation. So um, by and large, I think the deciding factor should be uh, vaccination. If both sides are fully vaccinated, then that will enable a lot more in-person travel. And that will then enable a more informed discussion and deliberation uh, in both democracies. で、今の状況の中だ、あ、で、それを見たその台湾の農家さんが、私も食べてみたいと思った。いいですか、ご紹介してくださって。えっと、やっぱりたくさんの人が現地に行って、その、え、感想を話すことによって、状況は変わってい
感情はあの共有されないから友達を作って、えー、対に連絡を取ってで、えー、と情報を感情を共有することによって、えー、未来に向かって語っていくそういうふうにすること。<笑>やっぱり互いの国を意識する観光が再開することがかなり大きな前提になるんですかね。So by restarting the、um, overseeing movement, each other will be a game changer of,、uh, from this. Situation. Certainly, because had I not visited Japan and actually tasted the persimmon, if I just look at a picture of the persimmon, I would not be able to say gikiyuma because it, it would not taste like anything, right? So, obviously, from my personal experience, having this in person travel is Obviously, a very important part in、uh, re associating the term Fukushima with the new developments because otherwise I would just be reading、uh, or watching the TV, but that will not change my feelings that easily. <laughs> そういうものがあの状況を打破していくわけですね。というふうに教えてくださいました。Um, so you talked、uh, to us about your community with the student in Fukushima. Could you tell us a bit more about it? What did you feel and what did you learn from those students? It, it left a very strong impression on me. Uh, especially, there was、uh, a young person that said during the time between the earthquake and the full recovery, they had to attend some other different cities' schools. And they were,、um, I wouldn't say discriminated, but certainly a little bit bullied、uh, because people would、um, keep a distance or use some、uh, not very positive terminology and so on.、Uh, and because they know I had been bullied when I was eight years old, so they asked me what I would do uh, if uh, I'm in their place.、Uh, and so I said, the first, the most important thing is to love yourself, is to like yourself,、uh, to understand your unique perspective is a gift to the world. It's not anything that's your fault. It's not. And cert- certainly, the second important thing is to use that opportunity, such as a TV interview, to make this situation public. So it's not your burden to solve it in your school, it's everyone's burden to solve it in the society. So, work with professional journalists to make this、uh, more visible. And so,、uh, I understand that this is not very easy for a single student to work. But if many people <coughs> band together, and then we can change how people see this thing.、Uh, and so this really、uh, reminded me of my own childhood,、uh, and I really relate、uh, to the strengths and resilience to the young people. Deeply touched.、Um, so I nearly cried by your words. <laughs> あの中には原発事故のあといじめにあったと思うんですよ。その時にご自身も8歳の時の経験を思い出してやられたこともあったけれどもその自分のユニークな部分をギフトだと思って逆にそれを再発見して、えー、とそれをチャンスに変えて大人といろんな挑戦することもできるかもしれないし、えー、とインタビューに答えて多くの人に。情報を発信することもできるかもしれないし、あのそうやってその機会を返すということを福島の子どもたちに発信してきます。じゃあ、これが私の背景。あ、He saw that video。はい、He did、うん。あの、ちょっと前に戻りますけど、現地っていう動画ありましたよね、あそこが強かったね。あれってあの福島の我々にとってはものすごく嬉しかったんだけれども、あの台湾の、ね、こう閣僚である大泉さん、あれ
いなことで、おそらく観察も予想されたんじゃないかと思うんです。あのその中で、あの動画を上げるってものすごく覚悟がいるんじゃないかと思っていて、あのどのような思いであの動画を上げたのかっていうのを改めて知りたいです。We were so happy to see your video that you were saying, Gekyuma. And all Fushima people are very encouraged by your message. But as a minister of a Taiwan country, a Taiwan region,、um, it may be someone who, has, who opposed to your opinion.、Um, aren't you afraid of that? Kind of opponent,、um, a counter comment. Why, why did you upload that video? As a minister of、uh, the Taiwan jurisdiction, if you want a neutral word, <laughs> the Taiwan jurisdiction,、um, I think the most important message I have is not to convince anyone, it is just to share my personal true feeling. So, if the persimmon doesn't taste good, you will see <laughs> that my reaction wouldn't be good. <laughs> I, my, my reaction is Kikuma, certainly because it was really very tasty. <laughs> right? So, I, I think authenticity and personal experience matters because this is not about a debate. This is not about me trying to convince you. This is about my true reaction to the fruit、uh, and capturing the moment. So, I don't think anyone opposes me sharing、uh, something tasty because I am, after all, not saying you should find this tasty too. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just sharing my own reaction. I see. You didn't say we should import this fruit into Taiwan. Because at the time, it was still at the binding、uh, period of the national referendum. So,、uh, if I say that, it will be against the referendum result. But I can say, for example, oh, I come all the way to Tokyo, to Japan,、uh, to have this because I can't have this at home. Now, that is a neutral statement. So, what I'm trying to do is just to facilitate more understanding. But I am not certainly say, I'm certainly not saying I'm above the referendum. That's not possible. いいけないけれども、自分のパーソナルなことをこう言って何も悪いことはないでしょう。で、えっ、ー、とこういうふうに言うことによって本当の本心を話すことによって、えっ、ー、と<笑>あの本当はアンポガキを見せたかったんですけど、今奇跡じゃないのですみません。<笑> We show you、uh, the persimmon, but It is not the season now. I understand. Yes. <laughs> This is the season for peach. Yes,、uh, I, I've heard that peach is really good. <laughs> it's really tasty and sweet. <laughs> I want you to taste it someday. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. こう二年後に海洋放出するという方針を日本政府が示しています。あの国内もそうですが、海外からも今不安の声が出ていると思うんですが、あのこの海洋放出への理解を世界に対して進めていくためにはどういう発信が必要だと思いますか。Uh, he is asking about the treated water, which is supposed to be released from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant two years later. From two years later. And、um, there are many people、uh, consider it dangerous mentally, not by scientifically. So, how should Japanese government or we media should send a message, scientific message?、Um. 
because I'm not directly uh, working with our Ocean Affairs Council, I myself am not very well informed on this particular matter. From what I have heard, there are already measurement stations set up by the Ocean Affairs Council in Taiwan around the seas and ocean places. Uh, and we will keep, of course, monitoring uh, this and also work on ways to make it more legible. But this I also read from the press release, beyond which I really have no idea. And I'm quite honest in that. If I'm not involved in that decision making, uh, I will simply say that I believe our Ocean Affairs Council are working on it. So as a media, should we send more scientific information to our own company and also to the world? Do you think the information is enough or is it needed more? I think a lot of it boils down to the source of information. If people trust your message, then of course you, your message can cater to the people who trust you. On the other hand, for people who currently have no trusting relationship with you as media, then maybe some other way needs to be found. In Taiwan's case, for example, when we are telling are voting, like vote for president, uh, telling the paper-based ballot, instead of just publishing it from the Central Election Commission, we made sure that each party, even non-partisan people like me, uh, can go to their local counting stations and even film the counting process from multiple angles. And this ensures that people don't have to trust any single news source to make sure that the election result is widely accepted. Instead, people can trust the YouTuber that they trust to oh. film the counting station. And each YouTuber, each major party, maybe have their own counting app. But when their counting app all agree on the result, then no matter who you support, no matter who you uh, vote for, then people will not have a kind of alternate reality debate about the outcome of the election. So allowing people to observe many different partisan sides to observe together, to share the same data together, to update the data as quick as possible, like an open API. These are the elements of mutual trust. Any single media can only do so much. So before sending a message, we need to uh, create the mutual. Um, we need to uh, like uh, to have. We need to trust each other. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, for media uh, between media and audience, and also mm -hmm. from to other countries. Yes. Yes. We call it a data coalition. It's like a, a coalition of people who uh, are not necessarily so trusting each other or in a permanent uh, binding relationship. A coalition is essentially um, something that's around an emergency or a new situation. And then anyone who cares about this, despite their differences in positions, can agree on some shared value. For example, on the importance of people to understand the science and the facts. If people understand that, then they can still work together despite they have different ideological positions and so on. We see something very similar with uh, climate action and also with uh, pandemic prevention. Even people on the local municipalities, central governments, international organizations don't agree with each other on the politics. Still, on the base facts and data, they have ways to share together into a fabric. The same probably need to happen to anything that uh, transcends the boundaries of jurisdictions, uh, that is to say true global issues, and certainly water, as well as climate, as well as virus, uh, all fit this definition. Yeah, that kind of um, issue is not uh, in one 
one country's issue is beyond the border. Yes. So yes. We create trust between mm-hmm. nations and share ideas. Uh, I I can learn from what you said. Thank you. Thank you. えっと、ま、この問題に関しては私は科学者ではないので、えっと、その、自分自身の生徒の話を聞かないといけない、信頼してる日本にはあってですね。これを打破するためには何が必要かっていうのを考えたんですけども、例えば台湾のコロナ対策とかを打たれた時に、こうユニークな視点でこうデマを打破していくとかそういうものも見たんですけれども、何かこうちょ情報を
あのマスクのマスクを作ったとみんな言うけれども僕は情報を流しているだけでそれを可視化するようにしたのは僕の友達だしいろんな人がそのシステムに関わっていてで同じようなチャンネルもいっぱいあるんですね。でそういうあその友達が作ったとか自分が知っている人が作ったって思うとあのすごく説得させられたわけじゃなくても自分でこうそれを進めようと思います。だからよくわからない信頼関係ができてない人にバーって言われるよりもよっぽど効果的だっていうそのなんていうのって言ってるんですけどもカッテンスに関しては。今とね、こう日本政府にその信頼関係が福島との間にあるのかと考えると正直あるとは言えない状況なのでその解決方法がそのまま当てはまるのかと考えるとなんかすごく複雑な気がします。Between Fukushima and Japanese government, so you have to find a way、uh, to have trust between people and between among Japan. <laughs> so, so, in his opinion, firstly, I think he's a good person. So, so, what he said is about in terms of、um, treated water, firstly,、um, The government decided the way and then convinced people, but it should be opposite.、Um, inform people the information, and after they understand,、um, they need to,、uh, we have to decide the way. But what he said is Japanese government did opposite way. I, 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 I don't think it's specific to any particular government. This has everything to do with the communication technology. For example, if all you have is pen and paper, it's very easy to issue the paper, like newspaper, right, or government decree、uh, to all the neighborhood. But if they have something to say, if they write on that paper, There is no way for people who authored these to know because the printing press is a broadcasting tool. It's not really a listening tool.、Uh, and the same goes for television and radio. It's very easy for one or two persons to decide something and speak it to the world over television or radio. But again, to ask people questions over radio is very difficult because you can only pick up one phone call at a time from the radio. So、uh, I really don't think it's specific to any particular government. It's just previously, listening at scale is much harder than speaking at scale. Uh, and what we are now working in Taiwan as part of open government work is just to make listening as simple and as effective as broadcasting. But this is an open research domain, and everyone around the world is still researching how best to do this.、Um, what is the open government?、Uh, mm-hmm. And it's a bit more? Yes. Open government means to make The data about decisions, not personal data, the public data, transparent. And then, based on the transparency, provide a way for people to participate in how to interpret the data for future decision making, how they feel about this data. So, participation. And once people provided some really good suggestions, recommendations, we need to be accountable. 
to explain which are feasible, which are not yet feasible, to be accountable to people by providing an account of how the participation affects policy. And finally, this accountability needs to include more and more people every time something is consulted. So people who don't have right to vote, younger than 18, for example, must also have a way to express their ideas and influence the agenda, as well as foreign immigrants, non-citizen residents, people previously excluded. So that's inclusion. So transparency, participation, accountability and inclusion together forms open government. That sounds amazing. Why doesn't Japan have that kind of system? <laughs> I, I regret. Um, that's amazing. Um, I know, well, you know, it's so, I know, like, the text knows, you know, you know, the text knows, you know, 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 you クリスとかそうですね、まあそういうことはあるとなぜならまあテレビとかもそうだけどあの発信することは大事だけど人の意見を聞くっていうのはなかなか難しいで台湾の研究では透明性を高めるために台湾の参加できるオープンスタバなん
there are many like dark and negative news, <laughs> but you you gave us a lot of energy and let's overcome the COVID pandemic and then see each other. I want you to show around Tsushima. There are many beautiful nations, uh, beautiful natures, and delicious food, food, sake. If you like sake, I will show you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Let's say bye bye by your. Mm -hmm. Yes, time. live long yeah. and prosper. Thank you. And thank you for the excellent questions. Uh, it's really pretty good uh, journalism work that you're doing. I think it will be very important to the world. Thank you. You flatter me. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.